Hello, I'm Atuba George. I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread? I've got a lot I want to share with you. Say, Father, I demand and I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I was sharing something to you yesterday in, in, in Acts chapter 11 and verse 29 when the disciples decided that, okay, let's send relief to the saints in Jerusalem. Now, I, I want you to understand something. They in Jerusalem already knew how to tithe. Tithing was never a problem to the Jews. Go study their life. Study their lifestyle. I told you, I think sometime last week, even Jesus partook of the tithe. When he took the donkey, he took to enter Jerusalem. It was someone's tithe. Yeah. Now, so it was a normal practice in, in among Jews. You don't go teach a Jewish man about tithe. You're looking at you like, this is our tradition. You see that now? It's a tradition to them. Now, from the commands of God, they formed a tradition now whether they understand the spiritual significance or no now that's why christ came so we teach them do you know these things you do do you know the meaning of it you see that now but now god was not just concerned about them you remember jesus at the well talking to that woman he told her he said you worship what you don't know for salvation is of the jews now he didn't mean salvation only the jews would be saved no, he's saying salvation will come from the Jews. Another way to point, look at it is, look at the Jews and the pattern of the commands God gave to them. You will understand your salvation. You see that now? Now, that's something to note and put in your mind. So now, they, they began to teach the Gentile church. Hey, he must put something aside. Now, I want you to understand, just as it is today, one of the difficult things to teach people is giving. Why? Because there is a tendency for people to think you're all after the money. You're all after their money. But here is the truth. It is a principle and pattern. It is an ordinance that God has set. And he set that ordinance for everybody. Anyone who follows it will enjoy the benefits. I hear some people say, eh, you, God is not a transactional God. Eh, God. Some people give to do transaction with God. God is not, who told you God is not a transaction? Everything about God is transactional. Everything about God is transactional. If you do this, I will do this. What's that? Transaction. If you don't come to believe in Jesus Christ, can you get saved? No. So your part is to believe. His part is that you get saved. So why did you believe? So that you will get saved. Transaction. So you had an expectation. Right? You had an expectation. That if I believe in Jesus Christ, I will receive salvation. Why do you want salvation? Oh, salvation is a good thing. So you like something that is good. Yes, okay, if you want what is good, then this is the way to go. Believe in him. Walk in righteousness. Then you will enjoy salvation. That's transaction. So, you know, they, they, they want to kill it because it's money. <laughs> it's good. But, but it's, it's the same principle that works in everything we do. You want to go to heaven, say, ah, you can't go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. That's transaction. So, I, I want to go to heaven, so I must believe in Jesus. That's transaction. Even God said, I place before you life and death, blessings and causes, choose life so that you and your family will live. Okay, so now I have chosen life. When you choose life, you're expecting something. Yes, you're expecting something. Oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm walking in church. Why are you walking? You know, I just want to say, you know that I'm expecting anything from God. You are deceiving yourself. 
Even God said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So when you draw near to him, you're expecting him to draw near to you. Transaction. So stop deceiving yourself. Stop letting men use words to play on your intelligence. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Jesus said it. Will, are, you more, are you more spiritual than Jesus? Are you more righteous in your thoughts than Jesus? It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? Don't say, he was not referring, whatever he was referring to, according to you. He says, you will receive it. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. That's transaction. So he's telling you, expect this when you give. Paul preach. Let no one deceive you whatsoever. A, don't be mocked. Don't, God do not allow himself to be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. So the measure you give is the same measure that you will receive. Transaction. No, people don't serve God again. People are just now, brothers and sisters, God have made promises and we must pull on his integrity, not because we believe or, or we dwell on material things, but brothers and sisters, material things are part of it. We are not covetous. No. But don't let anyone deceive you of your reward in working with God. That you need something and someone convinces you, I don't want to sound covetous. So it's just that uh, I need a new car. You need a new car. You need a new car. Not because you're covetous. You need it to do what you need to do. You need to dress well. You need to dress well. Not because you want to wear. Now, this thing, when your heart is in Him, you will use those things without them using you. But don't believe someone who's trying to play with your intelligence and play with your mind and tell you um, people are materialistic. There are people who are materialistic. But you see, if your mind is stayed on God, you, there is no way you will, you, will, you will dwell on materialism. You will enjoy material things. Yes, you will enjoy them. You enjoy them for the using. Same way you receive them, same way you give them out. That is the promise. So when God says, through your seed, Abraham, talking to Abraham, I will bless all the families of the earth. He was talking about taking physical care of all the families of the earth. Now, mm. when I say physical care, I want you to understand, healing is physical. People living well, people living in health is physical. Now we bring the spiritual dimension so that they will enjoy the physical blessing. So no, no physical things. Let's talk about things like good health. Good health is physical. When you are sick, you feel it physically. You break down physically. You lie down on the physical bed. When healing comes, it's physical. You feel the impact of the healing. You get up from that bed and you begin to do what you couldn't do before. It's physical. So also financial prosperity is physical. If you are broke, it's physical. You don't have money to do what you need to do. It's physical. So when God says, I will bless all the families of the earth, this is what he was referring to. I'm going to take care of the, all the families of the earth. Why do we have disobedience, wickedness, and all these things? It's because of these physical things. People lie, cheat. The, the, the cause of every iniquity is, is in this. The desire to have. The desire to have. A system where everyone is provided for, you would notice that the crime rate is minimal. Now, then you know that you only have to deal with people who are devilish in their mind. So there are people who all they imagine is evil continually. Now that is there. 
But then when you have, that's why in, in poverty stricken areas, you have all manner of crime, all manner of wickedness. It's in poverty stricken area, you hear somebody flew in the night to come and do evil to somebody else. You don't hear this among the rich people. You know what I'm saying? You hear all manner of things amongst poor people. Why? Because their minds are easy to adapt to those kind of things. So when God is speaking and saying, I want to take care of all the families of the earth, he's actually saying, I want to reduce crime. I want to reduce wickedness. I want to reduce... Now then we'll begin to know who we are dealing with. People who, who, from whom imagination naturally comes from. Not people who are deceived to do wickedness because of what they will get. Now they will accept that because they don't have. Understand these things. So now when God says he's going to do that, then he told Abraham, put the tithe aside. Now, Jesus came and followed the teachings of Jesus. In John chapter 10, he told them, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. They also will hear my voice and I will bring them in. Then it will become one fold and one shepherd. Why did he say that? I'm going to bring others that are not of this fold to come in and then we all will now be one, under one shepherd. What does the shepherd do? He takes care of the sheep. That was a prophecy that Jesus spoke right there. Meaning, I'm going now. Now you guys are here in, in, as Jews, but I have others. Now take note. Those others are not going to come in and become lesser than the Jews. Meaning, the Jews is not going to eventually claim to be more blessed than the Gentiles when they come in. It is the same promise God made to Abraham that will be found in them. Now, the early church had this mentality because they were still developing, they were still evolving, had this mentality that the saints are in Jerusalem. Now, so they began to take from the Gentile church to service the saints in Jerusalem. Now, not beyond the person, I, I showed you a scripture in, in Acts chapter 11, where the, 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 there was a prophecy. He didn't say Israel will face challenge. He said the whole world. Agabus had prof prophesied that the whole world will face persecution. But then here's their mentality. Let's start putting things together to send to the saints in Jerusalem. What about the saints in Corinth? What about the saints in... I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Now, it is a mentality that was playing out. And also, they were beginning... The Holy Spirit, take notes, because Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit was bringing the idea of giving as a practice. But these men he was using were cautious. Let me show you something. Ele Barakatuni. First Corinthians chapter 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let, let, before we go there, let's look at Romans, Romans chapter 15 and verse 26. Romans 15, 26. From verse 25. It says, mm, 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 mm. Twenty-five. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia 
to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Understand? It had pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. Follow this line of thought. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, now you see, you see the mentality. If the Gentiles have been made to partake of their who spiritual things, spiritual things of those from Jerusalem, the Jews. So you see the 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 in, in the early church then you see their mentality that the Gentiles are fortunate to come and partake of the spiritual things of the Jews. Right? So watch this. It says, It had pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. I see. So we brought you, we Jews came from Jerusalem to you Gentiles, and we brought you this spiritual truth. So it is necessary that you feel you're indebted to us to give us your physical, carnal things. So you put your money together, we take it. Now, this was what the early church was teaching. And you know it's wrong. I'm trying to show you that they were not perfect in their understanding also. But they were going somewhere. Rather, the Holy Spirit was going somewhere. And you know, it, 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 understanding doesn't all come at once. The Holy Spirit guides you. You understand. Ah, oh, wow, this is it. He guides you in again until we come to the place of truth and understanding. We know from day one, Jesus was thinking about the Gentiles. He had to use the Jews to get to them. But it doesn't mean he favors the Jews more than the Gentiles. He started with the Jews then developed the model it was bringing to the gender. But you see what the Holy Spirit was doing here. The Holy Spirit was now. So he, he said here in, in verse 26, for it pleased, it had pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor. Now, this became a normal practice. So they make a certain contribution for the saints in Jerusalem. What contribution was that? You were not told. But God was driving at something. Remember, the Jews make a certain contribution, and that's called the tithe. Now, you don't come to the Gentiles and start telling them, you have to tithe. This is what is tithe. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What is tithe? But the principle of setting something aside, which is also the system God taught Abraham, Moses told, commanded the Jews, it's the same thing they were practicing here. setting something aside for this purpose. Not only when they finish preaching, oh, come and give your offering. No, every they were setting things aside. They were setting money aside for this purpose. So every time they get something, they take out something aside and they keep it. Now watch this. Let me show you another scripture. Oh, I told you 1 Corinthians, right? Oh, rempe talo zavradi katala mandalia. Sore eknum busafa ita baida le karadishki. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Second Corinthians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Labasha. There are several scriptures. I'm, I'm trying to take them step by step. Okay, good. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Now, concerning the collection for the saints. Concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the churches of Galatia, as I have as I have given order to the churches of Galatia. So even so you do. So now you, you realize that Paul gave orders to the churches in Galatia. 
Now he's bringing this order also to the church in Corinthians. He gave them a command. That's what he was saying. I gave them a command. Uh, no, we give freely. Uh, 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 uh. Paul says, as I gave command, as I gave order to the churches in Galatia, so also I am giving you the same command. What is that command? Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God have prospered him. And there be no gathering, that there be no gathering when I come. I told them every week, do what? Lay by him in store. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God have prospered him. Meaning this, your gathering is not the same amount. As God have prospered you, keep something aside. Now, it's not the same thing God told them concerning the tithes. Are you getting what I'm saying? God said, anytime you prosper, anytime you are blessed, take out 10% and keep aside. Hey, but, but he didn't say 10%. Remember, he's trying to bring... Now, now, this is not just Paul's mind now. The Holy Ghost is now bringing this practice to the Gentiles. The vessels he's using is being careful not to tell you, you we are forcing you to practice Judaism. But then they were introducing principles and precepts ordained by God to the Gentiles church. My time is up. Praise God. We'll continue tomorrow. Father, we give you praise for your understanding is coming to us. And we receive your praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.